Hey, my name is Zach and today we're testing out the autofocus on the Sigma 80-35mm f1.8. Let's get started. So when I was first thinking about picking up the Sigma 18-35 for the Canon M50, an initial concern that I had uh, buying a third-party Sigma lens was I wasn't sure how the autofocus system and the lens was going to interact with uh, the M50 and other uh, Canon cameras considering it it's kind of more of an aftermarket or, or a third-party lens. So what I thought would be a good idea is to do a video autofocus test comparing the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8 compared to the Canon M50's kit lens, the Canon 15 to 45 millimeter, just to test the, the different autofocus settings and see how it reacts in video. Um, mainly just testing just on stock settings with the, the dual pixel autofocus, just seeing how the two lenses react when you put different things in front of the lens and when a, a person or a subject is walking towards the camera, seeing how, how smooth that, that transition is and if the, the focus on the camera tends to hunt more than, than the other. So it's gonna be interesting to test out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera on a tripod in a couple different scenarios, maybe one outside with some different kind of uh, focal lengths, one a little bit wider, one a little bit tighter. And we're just gonna test out the smoothness and see how the overall autofocus performs. So let's jump into the tests and take a look. So this is the 18 to 35 uh, with an ND on. Uh, because I'm outside, I just wanted to shoot it with the kind of hardest scenario with uh, the lens wide open. So this is me just walking. Seems to be tracking pretty good. That's at f1.8. And if we zoom it in, so now we're at 35 mil on the uh, 18 to 35 wide open with an ND on. We might be a little bit underexposed, but uh, it's still tracking my face. Not too bad. So this is the 15 to 45. I don't have an ND filter for this lens because of the filter size. So I just brought up the shutter. So if it's a little bit choppy, that's that's why. Um, but yeah, I'm shooting this lens wide open as well. Uh, so when this is fully wide, it's an f3.5. And when you zoom in, it goes to a 6.3. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna try it wide and then I'll zoom it in all the way and we'll do that. Seems to be tracking as just as good, if not better. Uh, it's not as shallow though, so let's zoom it in all the way. And I'm gonna compensate the shutter speed a little bit here. That's zoomed in all the way to 45 mil, and we're at f6.3. I just brought down the shutter to level out the exposure a little bit. So it does look like it's tracking my face still. Not too bad. So this is the Canon 15 to 45 millimeter. I have it at 35 millimeters, as wide open as it can go at f5.6. And I'm gonna use the touch focus point uh, and rack from the keyboard to the glass and see how smooth that is. So yeah, one tap and it was, it was spot on, it didn't hunt. Let's go back. Took a little bit of a second to find it, but it didn't hunt at all. So that's what we want. Yeah, so very, very smooth overall. Uh, I'm gonna put on the Sigma. We can see how that looks at 35 as well. So this is now with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter on the camera at f1.8 at 35 millimeters. 
So technically this should be a little bit harder uh, because it's wide open, but uh, let's do a little test here. takes a second when you click it, but then it does rack right to it. It just takes a little bit longer on uh, the initial press. It's just it's pretty close to just as fast as the Canon though. So let's bring it to 5.6 to do a little bit more of an even comparison. Okay, so now we're at 5.6 on the Sigma. And yeah, we're we're just as fast as the Canon for sure. Which is a more accurate comparison. And let's just do one of the focus noise. So you can hear it a little bit when it's racking, but Nothing too crazy. So as you can see, when you're using the 18 to 35 millimeter like this, it's a bit heavy of a vlogging setup, but uh, this is just to show you how the autofocus works. So if I put my hand there, it goes to it and then it goes to my face, but it's pretty good. I can see it's tracking my face, so it's doing, doing a pretty good job of that. I'm going to put the 15 on and we'll test that. So, and then this is the same vlogging setup with the Canon 15 to 45. I'd say this is a way better vlogging setup. It's still tracking my face, but it's also not as, as shallow of a depth of field. So it doesn't necessarily matter as much, um, but it's just, it's way lighter. And uh, it's just, it's just way, it's way wider as well too, because 15 compared to the 18. Um, but yeah, this is uh, great as well. And uh, yeah, I think it just goes to show you the Sigma does a really, really good job with the autofocus. Um, almost just as good as this. So as you can see through the test, I would say the Sigma is just as fast, if not faster autofocus than the native Canon lens. And uh, comparing the two together, as you can see, there's really very minimal focus hunting and the accuracy of rack focusing or tracking a subject is surprisingly good for, for a stills lens. So the only negative about this lens is that I did notice uh, the Sigma has a, a very accurate autofocus motor and very fast, but it is a little bit more noisy compared to the Canon STM lenses uh, counterpart. Um, it's just as accurate and everything, just if you are planning on using it in a video scenario with an internal mic, you may pick up a little bit of uh, the lens hunting if, if you're doing shots where you're walking into frame or anything like that. All the examples that were used in this video were with the Canon M50 and the Rode Video Micro on top. So that'll hopefully give you uh, a little sense of how much noise the, the actual lens makes if you wanna go back and, and watch the examples and just turn up the volume. It's definitely more than acceptable for any online content. If you're just sitting in a scenario like this where you're not moving around, uh, the lens isn't really gonna be hunting anyway, so you, you definitely won't hear it in, in a more stationary setup. It's pretty awesome that we have all these great lenses at our disposal now. The fact that even five or 10 years ago, let alone not being able to film on a DSLR and have the shallow depth of field, now in these almost consumer grade cameras or mirrorless cameras or, or video cameras, uh, we have the ability to put these awesome uh, photo and video lenses on these cameras and also use this great autofocus. So basically, if you're a, a one person shooter, uh, you don't need to have an extra person pulling focus or anything like that. I don't necessarily think this technology is ever going to take away the traditional focus puller for larger productions. I think there's still huge value in being able to plan out a shot and have focus hit on specific points at a certain time. But I think the ability that this opens up for kind of more independent creators or YouTube content creators is, is pretty awesome. The fact that we have these features in, in such affordable cameras now. 
So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you haven't, give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, and if you want, you can follow me on Instagram at FilmZach. And until next time, coffee and create. Peace.